Okay, welcome everybody. So this is the first video on our new YouTube channel. So I thought I'd give you an, an overview as to how to install Hyper-V on this host so that we can then install various different operating systems, create a network, all kinds of fun things. So let's have a, let's get into this. Um, so we'll go to control panel and we'll go to uh, programs and um, we need to turn Windows features on and off. Um, now just bear in mind that uh, what we're looking for here is Hyper-V. Um, now this isn't naturally available in the Home Edition. There are some hacks that we've seen online where you can hack the Home Windows 10 Home Edition so that it can use Hyper-V uh, but out of the box it doesn't have this so just bear that in mind. So this is a Windows 10 Professional or Windows 10 Enterprise. Okay so um, we've gone into here we're going to tick this box um, so basically we want the Hyper-V features so we'll click OK and it'll install all the bits and bobs. Okay, so now we're going to restart the PC. Okay, so uh, we've restarted the PC, and now it's uh, it's ready to go. So, if we um, if we click in the Cortana search box and we type in Hyper V, um, you can see we've got Hyper V Manager here now. So if we go into here, this is the console where we create a list of virtual machines. Um, so we might have a Windows 10 machine, we might have a Windows Server machine, uh, we could have Linux machines, we could have um, several different um, instances of the same machine. So we could have a Windows 10 machine that's set up in one way and a Windows 10 machine that's set up in another way. We could have a whole list of computers in here that we can turn on and off whenever we feel we need to, to demonstrate different things. Um, so this is a really useful way of um, having ver various different scenarios that you can just boot up whenever you need one. Um, so that's that's really good. Um, in the left hand column here we've got Hyper-V Manager, that's the, the program. Um, this machine here, th this is that computer that we're, con that we're using at the moment. So we're, it's called VM Host. Um, once we've got a list of machines in here, there will be machines running on the computer that's called VM Host. Okay, we're going to need an operating system um, to install a virtual machine into this system that we've built. So we're going to go online and we're going to download the Windows 10 ISO file um, and then we're going to use that later to build the server. Okay, so we'll accept the license agreement. We'll choose to create an ISO file. Here we're able to select different options within these boxes if we untick the box at the bottom. Um, but for us, this is fine, so we'll just leave it as it is. We'll create this ISO file, we'll click continue and we'll choose somewhere to save the ISO file to and we'll give it a suitable name
we've speeded some of the next process up because it does take a while. Obviously this will depend on your broadband speed. Okay, and the process is finished, so you've now got a file wherever you saved it to. Are you finding this video useful? Please like it and subscribe to the channel to make sure you get notified of new tutorials. Okay, so next we're going to actually create a virtual machine inside Hyper-V Manager. So we'll go across and we'll click on new virtual machine and we'll follow the wizard through. Um, so we'll call this Windows 10 uh, Pro and uh, we can accept the default location unless you need to store it somewhere else. Um, but it's, uh, you might want to do that if you're struggling for disk space for instance. Um, but for us this is fine. Um, so we'll click next. Um, we may as well click generation 2 uh, so that's fine and this is the startup uh, memory so the RAM for the machine um, so we can give this uh, a nice bit of uh, nice bit of RAM so if we for instance on this machine the hardware of the actual machine has got 16 gigabytes of RAM so we can afford to give this 8 gig um, so if we um, give this 8192 that's 8 times 1024 so 8192 um, dynamic memory allows this to flex this um, up and down as it needs to, to to make it most efficient but we need to give it a good size to start with because otherwise um, the startup procedure often fails if you give for let's let's say for instance you only gave that one at one gig of RAM it would probably fail to boot um, so we need to give it a good chunk to start with on this screen um, this is the internet connection or the, the network card connection for the virtual machine as it is there by default it won't have a connection to the network so if we wanted to test something in a sandbox uh, we wanted to make sure it didn't have any connection to the outside world then this is what we would do but for us we really want to be able to connect out onto the internet so we'll connect it to what they call the default switch which means that it shares the network card of the host machine Okay, so this is um, this is where we're going to put this new hard disk. Um, Hyper-V suggests that we start with a partition of 126 gigabytes. This tends to be dynamic, so um, I wouldn't necessarily um, expect to see a file of 127 gig to start with. It'll generally increase up to that speed, up to that kind of size. Uh, but so that that should be fine for what we need to do. So we'll go next. Um, we can now install an operating system from a bootable image file. This is the one that we downloaded. So we'll click on there, we'll click on browse. Um, if we have a look, where is it going to be in our downloads? No, documents, here we go. So it's in our uh, documents folder, we'll click on open. So this is going to boot from this ISO file. So we'll click next and we'll click finish. Okay now before we turn this on we need to go back into the settings because by default this only gets one core of the processor so let's give it a little bit more let's make it a quad core processor um, we've got uh, 8 gig of RAM um, okay let's give that a go then so we'll click OK and we'll double click it to start it uh, we'll click start and then once this boots 
we need to catch that. So I press the space bar to say boot from the CV CD or the DVD. So now it is on its way. So um, for us, this uh, this is fine. This is U U United Kingdom setup. So we'll click next. We'll click install now. So basically now what we're doing, um, oh, we'll, we'll go, I don't have the product key, um, so we, we can run this as a, an unactivated uh, device for a bit. Um, so Windows 10 Pro and click next. So we'll just click through this. So this is basically the same as if you would um, formatted a, a computer from scratch so you're booting up from the ISO image and you're installing Windows 10 fresh onto a computer Okay, so we're just whizzing through the the usual startup um, questions. Okay, um, so just for simplicity, if we set up for an organisation, um, and then we'll tell it to domain join instead which it can't do so this will allow us to create just a normal user so so if we just call that user for a second and give it a, a password Okay, um, I just generally click the bottom option of all these just to get it through. Okay, very nearly there. Okay, so we'll just allow this to do what it's going to do. Okay, so if we log in, this is now a, a PC on the network, just like any other PC would be. Um, so what we can do now is configure it for remote desktop connection. And then we'll be able to remote desktop connect to this computer rather than using it through this VM host window. So first thing I would suggest is that we rename the computer. So if we rename it because at the moment we're not going to remember what that is. So let's rename the PC. Let's call it Windows 10 1 because we might have more than one Windows 10 machine. So we'll call it that. Um, we shall restart it later because what we also need to do is turn on the remote desktop settings. So we'll enable remote desktop, we'll confirm 
that and yeah select users that can access it we can already access it with the user called user so that should be enough for now so let's give that a restart Okay, so now that it's got to this login prompt, in theory, we should be able to do a remote desktop connection. And we should be able to connect to Windows 10-1. And we're going to connect as user. And the password that I gave it just now. And we can take that box, say yes. And there we have it. So we are now logged in to this computer. And we can do whatever we like with it. So I hope you found this really useful. Um, we're going to use Windows instances like this for demonstrating various different procedures um, and ways of doing things in future so I thought it would be really useful to show you how we're going to set up the virtual um, sessions um, and I hope you look forward to seeing what else we do in future so please um, like I said before like the uh, video please subscribe to the channel and make sure that you tick the bell to make sure you get the notifications of uh, of our new videos. Your support is really important to us so if you wouldn't mind please go and visit our YouTube channel and click the subscribe button that would be really appreciated. Thank you.